easy way to make a game. Let's start by looking at five games that I tested this process with, and then I'll do a demo of creating another game. You can decide for yourself if this is an easy way to make a game or not. So the first game that I have here is a 2D Endless Runner. It's just a one button game. The only thing you do here is jump. But some of the things that are going on here, we have randomly spawning objects and coins, and also there is a constant movement. Now by adding two more buttons, we can make it a platformer. So right here I have a 2D platformer. You can jump from platform to another. The camera is following the player and there's also some parallax effect on the background. The player has double jump, so there's more possible ways to move around. Right now I have only 2D games that I can show, but the same process can be used for 3D games as well. And I'll show that in a later video. If we add random object generation back and instead we generate moving platforms, we can make this type of endless 2D jumper. So hopefully by now you have an idea of all the different types of games that you can create by using the mechanics that I showed in these games. But let's take a look at two more games and then I'll show you how easy it is to create another one. Another game that I tested this process with is a top-down RPG game, but there's still much more mechanics that I'm not ready to show yet. And if there's a game that you're interested in making, 2D or 3D, write the type of a game in the comments and also provide a name of a game you have in mind. I'll try to make top mentioned games from the comments in my next video. So if there's games that you want to see, make sure you write those in the comments. You can write more than one if you want. And the last game that I have for you in this video, before I show you how to create another one, is this top-down tank game. And there's one more mechanic that was introduced with this one. So that's all the games that were ready to be shown at this point. There's lots more to come, but now let me show you how easy it is to create this type of games. Now what I used to make those games is Unity with Bolt, but what I'll be showing does not come by default with Bolt. This is something I'm developing. Currently I don't have it available for download, but I am planning to release an early access version. So if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, it's a good time to subscribe. Before we start creating the game, let me demonstrate the process. I'll add a 2D object, Sprite, Square. And for this object, one of the things I'm going to add is a box collider. So I can set up the collision shape of this box. And now I'll add a flow machine. Switch it to embed it. And in this flow machine, that's where all the logic for this game object happens. I'm going to remove these two units here. And let's say I want my square to jump. You can just add one unit, jump preset. And here you can specify some settings. Let's set the max jump to a large number. And just like that, we got the square to jump. Now we can add another square and position this one at the bottom. Add a box collider for this one as well. And we'll scale it for our other square. Let's change the sprite to a character. And let's add an animator. Adjust the box collider. And for that platform, I'm going to set the tag to be in ground. We have the jump animation and the aisle animation working just by adding that one jump unit. Now I can continue with that and add a move horizontal option and now our player can run and jump. We have the platform functionality. So this is me showing how those games that I just showed were set up and now let's create a new game. So I have sprites right here, add a background. I'll switch it to tile and scale it to 30 by 30 and the order layer, I'll switch it to negative one. Now I can add our player ship, add that box collider, add the flow machine, embed it, add a graph. What I'm gonna use is move horizontal and also add move vertical. So now our player can move right and left and up and down. Next, let's add a laser. So for the laser, we'll add a box collider as well, add a flow machine. On start, I want the laser to move at a constant speed. So I'll use a move unit, set it to eight. And after we start moving, I'll add another unit, remove with delay of three seconds. Add another unit on trigger. And whenever we enter a trigger, I want the laser to explode. So now the laser is just moving forward. I'll make that laser as a prefab remove it from our scene and we'll go to our player add an on keyboard input when the space button gets clicked i want to spawn that laser spawn it a little bit above my player so i can move around the player and shoot the lasers now for enemies i'm going to use this meteor add a box collider to d set it to is trigger add a flow machine here on start i want to move the meteor and i'll be moving it in negative one and on trigger i want to drop a coin and after i drop a coin i'm going to remove this meteor so right there, the meteor is moving down. And if I shoot it, a coin gets dropped. Can't pick up the coin yet because I need to set my player to have a player tag. Now I can make a prefab from this meteor. And now I'm going to create a spawner and a flow machine to it. And I want to use a spawner unit. 
So we're going to be spawning the meteor. The minimum delay of spawning, I'll put two seconds and the maximum of four seconds. The minimum of shift, I'm going to set it to negative eight in the X axis and positive eight. Position the spawner outside of our camera. And the last thing, I'm going to add a preset game UI. This preset displays the amount of coins and how long you were playing the game. And now that we have the prototype ready, we can play test it and continue adding more features. So what do you think about what I just showed? Is this an easy way of making the game or you still find it difficult? Write what you think in the comments. I really want to hear your opinion. If you want to support this project, click on the like button and share this video with everyone. That will help me get a lot of feedback that I can use to make this project better. And like always, thanks for watching and stay smart.